Hey, welcome back to our YouTube channel. And this is another video following the previous video I've created about the introduction of Laravel. And today I'm going to uh, continue and I'm going to start coding seriously. And the first things I'm gonna do is to open the ZAMP. And before I open ZAMP, um, Okay, uh, give me a little bit seconds. So the first things I'm going to do is to open ZAMP. Remember from the previous video, I told you about having ZAMP. So I'm going to open ZAMP and I'm going to make sure that I start the Apache, which is not necessary, but the only thing you need to that is my SQL if you want to access the MySQL database. So um, that's it. And uh, the other things you need to check is the EMV files. And from the EMV files, you're going to check the DB connection, the database, and uh, put the password here if your ZAMP has the password. And make sure that you have this database, which I'm going to confirm by opening the edge browser. So once I do that, I'm going to go to the local host and this is going to, oops, this is not going to open the ZAMP, the page because I have not opened the Apache. So I need to make sure that I open the Apache in order for me to access this page. Now, uh, once we refresh again, we are able to go to, to ZAMP welcome page and I can go to PHP my admin and um, it's going to take a moment to take me there and because my my ZAMP doesn't have a password so you see it didn't uh, require me to have a password in the first place so I'm going to make sure that I have this database is the same database I have here I'm going to create a database and I'm going to call it a blog because in this blog, uh, in this series, I'll be teaching you how you can create a blog. So you create a database and voila. So the other things you need to look at is this folder called database. And this is going to have um, uh, three folders in it. We have factories, then we have migrations, and we have seeders. So right now I want you to focus on migrations, which is where we are going to, to define our tables. And if there is some tables defined for us. Uh, we have table of users and we have um, well, three tables actually, but right now all tables we need is this table called users. So in order for us to be able to put the table inside this database, because right now, Oops, let me close this. Uh, because right now we can see that this table, this um, uh, this database does not have any tables at all. I can create table here, but that's not how we do it in Rollerval. So the way we do it, we come here, we define table here in migrations, which I will show you later. Um, but right now I'm going to migrate. Migration is like inserting the tables we have inside this for the migrations, be able to insert them in our database. So there is a command for that, which is PHP artisan migrate. And this is going to take the entire tables we have inside the project and dump them inside our database. So it's going to take that uh, responsibility for us. And once it's done, I'll be showing you the table inside the database which is the first part when you're developing the, the, the run of the application. So you'll be migrating tables inside the database. So once we refresh again, now we can see that our table has now some migrations in place. Now we can go ahead and do something else. But before that, how to create a migration? So uh, first of all, uh, to create a migration, there's something called models. So models are like, uh, like if you want to insert a user, a user need to have a name, a user need to have maybe an email, a user need to have a password and so on. That is what we call a model. 
So a nerve that is a model for already. Now this further, if you go to app models, you can see that we have a model of a user. And this is a, a model that is uh, already there for us to use. But that doesn't mean that we cannot create a model for us in order to use it inside our application. For example, in these tutorials, because we are going to build a blog, so it is more logical to have a blog model. So that's what I'm going to create, PHP artisan make. And what I'm going to make is a model. And this model is called blog. So you, you put it in small case. And once you create a blog, you want to also uh, create a migration. So remember immigration I told you is um, as how you define that table. So how you define this table to be, how it's going to be look, uh, looking like inside our database. So I'm going to create a model. And this is what is this command is doing. And this model is going to have the name of a blog. And after that, I'm going to create a migration. This is what this bug is going to do for us. So once I do that, you can see that um, a model has been created and, um, and also at the same time, this is going to create a, a migration for us in order to insert the table in database. So you can um, see that uh, here our, our model is created, but uh, there is a bug in it. It's not a bug, but it's based uh, practice. I'm going to show you Later on, but let's go to the folder of database and go inside migrations, and we see that we have um, we have this blog. So uh, because uh, my point to teach you guys is for you to be able to be the world class engineer. Uh, so I'm going to take this course to be combined it to combine it with um, GitHub. So. Right now, my project is not initialized to work with GitHub. So if you haven't seen my video about GitHub, please go and watch it. And maybe you can get understanding of what is GitHub and how it works and why a developer use GitHub in order to do his job. So right now, I'm going to initialize, uh, which is a command I have explained in that video. Please go and watch it. Maybe I will link it uh, somewhere on this video. You know, you can see the previous videos that we have made about GitHub. So uh, I'm going to initialize this folder with Git. So I'm going to do Git init. So this is going to initialize the empty repository for us. And you can see that the color change here from white to green. And this is basically saying that um, this folder, these files that we have here uh, are new. GitHub doesn't know about them. So we need to tell GitHub to start recognizing them and address them in order for, for it to give us more information, more, more useful features such as going back in history, which is the useful feature for GitHub. So um, now we, we save it uh, by doing a git add then paste then dot. And what this command is going to do for us is it's going to be able to add the, everything that we have been working on, be able to add it, stage it, well, how it is called in GitHub terms. So be able to stage them, the files for us in order for, for us to be able to commit them. So the first things you need to do is to add the files. And you can see that the, the, the data that is here is called a which is means that the files has been added to github histories now is is ready to be staged and com committed if we do git commit now which is like confirming what we have done and we're able to stamp it in order for github to say okay this is the time the time in history i will recognize this stuff now you can do that so it's just more logical to put the message of what you have done so that uh, at that point of time, that when you come back, you can re recognize the, the, the commit. So by doing that, I'm going to say I have done uh, initializing, initializing the project. 
So you have to make sure that the message is more readable and short and concise. And you, uh, there's a lot of you know article about how you can write a, a pretty much useful uh, commit message. But really, uh, and this is what I'm going to teach you during these um, uh, tutorials, just like all those best practices of how you can write the best useful big um, messages and so forth. And I hope this this is the skills that you cannot get anywhere else, be the university or any other places. So I hope you find this video more useful. So I'm, I'm committed this uh, files and then you can see that our, our files has changed back to white and um, it's no more greens. So this is to say that GitHub is now fine. It knows the files that we need to keep track and it has the history of what we have done um, up to this point. So how do we know that? The way you do that, we do git log, which is a command to log what you have done so far. So imagine if we have like more than uh, 20 developers working on the same project, this project actually, uh, so imagine like how can be so hard for you if you are a project manager to navigate through the um, through the code base and be able to be able to um, see the histories of what people has done so far and be able to uh, respond maybe to the challenges that we, they might be having and and so forth. So uh, that's um, that's it for now um, uh, about GitHub. So I'll just do mixing it with uh, this tutorial so you can get a more useful um, insight. All right, um, so that's what we have now. Let's go back to the code. Uh, you can see that GitHub is showing you uh, as to like this comment has been done uh, in past like 28 seconds ago. So let's go back to our model and explain what I, have. I was going to show you. So this is the model as I told you, you can see the namespace. Well, if you don't know about the namespace in PHP, any programming languages, how you can organize yourself and put the files where it's supposed to be. And namespace help you to localize those files where they are located. So for example, we know that this is a folder and this is also a folder. That is the simple way you can understand the namespace. Um, so now let me explain the issue that is on this file. Actually for beginners, for junior developer, this is not an issue at all, but yeah, for you guys, because I want you to be the, the world-class engineer that you could be, is that uh, the issue that you can find on this line of code here is that the class should start with a capital letter. So this helps you in your codes when you have a large a code base where you need to, to navigate through the code that you need, you don't need to guess around like this, is this a class, is this a method? You need to be having a variety of what you are looking and how it's going to work with, with little surprises. So by having that little detail taken care of, um, you are sure that your code base is not uh, spaghetti and it's going to work the way you would expect. So I'm going to delete these files and create it again, um, the, the better and the right way. So I'm going to delete it and I'm going to delete the same migration that it has created. So the migration itself has had no issues at all, but I'm going to create to delete it so that I can, I can create it the same time. So remember the command I used uh, is php artisan make Model. I'm going to call it blog. Remember, I say that a class should start with capital letter, then it's blog. And I'm going to specify that after this, I'm, I'm going to need the migration of this model. 
So you can see that the model has been created. And as I told you always, when GitHub see the new files, it is going to mark the new files with U, U rater, and it's going to make sure that these files is going to be green. This is going to be something you need to keep your eye on because you can see that the files that we have modified, which is this one with the B as capital letter, has um, a color that is different to this green one. So that is to say that GitHub knows that these files, you can see that it has M, this has U. So this M means that these files has been modified, but this one has been untracked. So the difference is that really this, this one, GitHub knows about it, but this one, GitHub doesn't know it, doesn't have any information about it at all. So what happened if you have an accident, maybe you lose your data and so forth, but you have pushed your code to GitHub, then these files here with you will never be returned. There's no way you can get it back because GitHub doesn't know it. But this one, at least you can have the point in history where you had it and you can get it back. And that is the beauty of GitHub. So I'm going to just add it and I'm going to commit it. Remember, this is the same process I use. So what have I done? Remember the message you are going to put in, in your commit message. And um, my commit message is like added model and equation. So it is so important for you guys to always write the the meaningful and useful commit message because if I am a project manager to you and I cannot read your commit message, it's going to be so hard for me to see what you have done and why you have done such a thing. So after that, you commit that and um, it's done. So I wrote this approach of committing small commits that reads to the bigger picture though for the feature you are working on because not only help you to to put your thoughts in place and make sure that you are moving in the right directions, but also help you to be good at making the algorithm and so forth. So um, this is what we have. Um, and this is what we have, we have for this video. I'm trying my best to make sure that the video is short as it can be, so that it doesn't bore you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and, uh, and um, if you if this is the first time please make sure that you like and subscribe to our youtube channel and make sure that you you share to your friends so that we can have more impact thank you so much for watching see you next time